Here is a story that will tax your powers of deduction. Perhaps you can assist us in solving the mystery which confronts officials of Trans-American Airlines. To aid us in the investigation, the United States Department of Justice has detailed Miss Irene Delroy, clever girl operative, to bring the guilty person or persons to justice. Now here is our problem. Within a period of three weeks, Trans-American has lost three of the newest type airmail ships in a very mysterious manner. In each case, the pilot, flying through night and bad weather, reported that the ship's motor cut out over mountainous country, forcing him to leave the ship by parachute. Upon locating the wreckage, officials of Trans-American found the mail apparently safe, but were astounded to hear that in each case, a valuable shipment of government securities was missing. Irene Delroy of the Department of Justice, Tom Powers, General Manager of Trans-American, and his board of directors are awaiting the return of Andrews, pilot of the ill-fated 601, the last ship to crash. I tell you, Andrews knows something about this. How do we know his motor cut out on him? We have only his word to go on. Suppose it didn't. Then what? Do you mean to imply, Powers, that there's some connection between Andrews and the airmail thieves? Why not? We've lost three ships counting the one tonight. Andrews was the pilot in each case. The only man in the ship. You don't hear about the motors on our passenger lines giving trouble. Why should the mail planes? Most of all, why should Andrews get all the bad breaks? But Powers, don't lose sight of the fact that heretofore Andrews has been our best pilot. He's been with us since we organized this company. Why should he want to deliberately wreck $80,000 worth of our ships? What is your opinion, Miss Delroy? Well, you should not overlook the fact that in each case there was a valuable transfer of government securities. Uh, I know how you feel about Andrews, Temple. You watched him grow up and aided him where you could. He's engaged to marry your daughter. But men have been known to crack before, especially where the stakes were high. What do you mean, Powers? Just this. I know that for the past few months, Andrews has been trying his luck in the market. He's been gambling on rather risky stocks. Now, I'll tell you something you don't know. Two days ago... Andrews sold all his holdings in Trans-American. How do you know that? The broker who has been handling Andrews' account told me. What's more, he told me that Andrews is hard up. It's preposterous. And he is not the man to gamble away what little money he has saved. I can show you the stock transfer tomorrow. The trouble with you, Temple, is that you're too soft-headed for a job like this. Soft-headed, eh? Mm. Listen. I believe we will get farther if you gentlemen will assist me by answering a few questions. Uh, sorry, Miss Delroy. Mr. Powers believes that the pilot might have had something to do with this case. Can you tell me, Mr. Powers, if there was any way for Andrews to know that the particular shipment he was carrying was of unusual value? You mean, uh, any way he could know that he was carrying securities? Yes, that's the question. Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose he could have found out some way... Where do you receive the mail from the post office? Just outside this door in the receiving room. Mm -hmm. How long does it take uh, there before it is loaded onto the plane? Oh, not long. Possibly 20 minutes. I see. Can you tell me, is the mail ever opened or sorted in the receiving room before it is loaded into the plane? Very seldom. Sometimes if there's too much weight in one bag, we divide it into two containers. However, this is done before the proper authorities. Do you remember if the eastbound pouch was opened here tonight before it was loaded into the plane? Yes, it was opened and divided while the post office men were here. Who ordered it opened? I did. For a reason? Yes. We were carrying a rather large load of express on tonight's eastbound. I wanted to distribute the load more evenly. These new fast mails have a ten tendency to be a bit nose-heavy as it is. Were you present when the pouch was emptied? I believe I was, at least uh, part of the time. Well, did you see the government shipment? If I did, I didn't recognize it. Can you tell us if Mr. Andrews was present when the pouch was emptied? Well, that I can't say. He may have been. Then again, he may not. Yes? There's a gentleman here to see you, Mr. Powers, a reporter. What's he want? I don't know, sir. Tell him we have nothing to say. Well, that's no way to receive a representative of the press, gentlemen. What do you want? I'm Gifford of the Star. Say, I hear you lost another ship tonight. Jimmy! 
Irene! <laughs> uh, I knew it. I knew it. Sure as shooting. I had a hunch there was something back of these crashes, and seeing you here makes me sure of it. Jimmy, I thought you were still in New York. Hardly. I'm a, I'm a roving sort of fellow. Can't stay in one place very long. You've got to keep traveling to keep ahead of these news hounds, you know. Say, let me look at you. Still as good looking as ever. Jimmy, please. <laughs> Did you get my letter? Jimmy, we're here on serious business. Oh, all right. See, what's up? Nothing as yet. Now, see here, Gifford, if you'll come around in the morning, we'll furnish you with a statement. Right now, we have other things on our minds. Exactly. And I'm thinking that the other things you mention will be more important than that statement you'll give me in the morning. That's enough. You weren't invited, so get out. Now, Powers, you forget you're talking to the press. You wouldn't want me to print a story saying that an official of Transamerican threw a reporter out on his ear, would you? I said get out of this office. Hey, uh, now, Mr. Gifford... If you have a few questions that won't take too long, perhaps we could... Uh... Fine. Now, I knew you'd be only too glad to help me out. You, uh, you lost another ship tonight. Now, what was the cause? The pilot reported motor trouble. Anybody hurt? No, it was a mail plane. No passengers. I presume the pilot bailed out. Who was the pilot? Andrew. You mean Andy Andrews, the war flyer? I believe he had some war experience. Hmm, that's the third time he's ripped the sack, isn't it? And what is your mission, Miss Delroy? That doesn't concern you, Gifford. And why not? Here I find the directors of Trans-American Airlines closeted with one of the best operators of the Department of Justice, and you say it doesn't mean anything. I can't oh. say anything as yet, Jimmy. Well, I see. It's just one another one of those things, isn't it? Mr. Andrews is back, Mr. Powers. Oh. Uh, well, bring him in, bring him in. We'll find out something about this. Oh, sit down, Andrews. You look all in. Oh, I am. Tired of the dog and soaked to the skin. Anybody got a drink? Here you are, mister. Help yourself. Oh, thanks. <laughs> this is great. Oh, aren't you going to join me? No, thanks. I, I only carry it for emergencies. Well, your first aid kit is serving its purpose this time. Say, well, what's the matter? Oh, I'm sorry, your face looked familiar. I was just trying to place it. My name's Gifford. I'm a reporter. Well, glad to know you, Gifford. Reporter, eh? I suppose there'll be a flock of you fellas around. And we'll have to ask you to leave, Gifford. This conference is to be private. Oh, that's distressing. I'd hope to lend my assistance. It won't be needed. I don't see any harm in letting Mr. Gifford stay, gentlemen. I've worked on cases with him before, and I'm sure we can rely on his discretion. We're going to discuss some very private matters, Miss Delroy. I don't intend to see the press destroy confidence in our pilots or our ships. On the other hand, I believe we can persuade Mr. Gifford to build up that confidence rather than destroy it. Oh, very well. What's up? Why all the hubbub? You carried a registered package tonight, Andrews. Well, what about it? I can't fly a ship without a motor, can I? Besides, you'll find that mail when you find the ship. I dumped the tanks and cut the switch. <laughs> I'm beginning to believe somebody has it in for me. Bailing out of three ships in a month. That's precisely why we're here. What happened? You know, that's the funny thing about it. It was practically the same as happened when I was flying 618 about a week ago. How do you mean? What well, was that? You see, I was fighting rain and low ceiling over Twin Peaks. But aside from that, everything seemed okay. I was right on time, and the buzzer showed I was on course, according to the radio beacon. Then all of a sudden, the motor cut, clean as a whistle. I pumped the throttle, but no soap. I switched on to both mags, but still, she wouldn't pick up. I could see there wasn't a chance to land the ship, so I did the only thing there was to do. Dump the tanks, cut the switch, radioed Metro, and bailed. That's all. What seemed to be the trouble with the motor, old man? Ignition. If it had been gas, the motor would have spluttered once or twice at least. How high were you when you were flying? Mm, about 4,800. That's only 1,800 above the pass. Was your motor turning up okay when you left? Sure. 1,700 RPM on the ground. That's plenty of suck. Had you checked ignition cables? No, why should I? That's Fitzgerald's job. Say, what'd he say about it? Fitzgerald swore that the ship had been thoroughly checked before you left. Where is this Fitzgerald? I let him go. I hold him jointly responsible for tonight's crash. And the other party? Andrews. Me? See, what's the idea? Just because I don't ride a plane to the ground, you blame me. Listen, Powers, I've put every plane we've got through on schedule in all sorts of weather. I've brought him in here with a motor pounding like a boiler factory. But when a motor cuts completely on me over that country, I bail out, see? And rightly, too. Rightly? Do you mean to tell me that you approve of Andrew's action? Naturally. What else would you expect a man to do? Go down with the ship? Oh, uh, don't get soft, Temple. Tonight, Andrews, you cracked the third ship in three weeks in the same place. Well, what about it? Why don't you find out why the motor on those ships stopped dead in a mackerel? For the love of Mike, do you think I like to bail out in the mountains? Do you think it's fun to risk my neck coming down in a chute in that kind of country? 
In those three trips, you carried $65,000 in government securities. Oh, what if I did? What of it? Those securities weren't with the mail when it was recovered from the wreckage. Now I get what you're driving at. In other words, Mr. Powers, you're trying to infer that I took them, is that it? Oh, well, I didn't say that, Andrews, but uh, on the other hand, we know that you've been plunging in the market. Well, what about it? Is there any law against a pilot playing the market? Everybody else does. Yeah, but you sold your holdings in Trans-American Airlines. Sure, why shouldn't I? The stock was mine. You admit you were hard up for money? Sure, I was a sucker and they cleaned me. But I didn't have anything to do with that mail. Hmm. Perhaps I'd better introduce you to Miss Delroy here. She's with the Department of Justice. It will be for her to decide. Uh, who is it? Mr. Powers. Yeah, well, what is it? Mr. Powers, I've just found the wreckage of 601. Oh, good. Andrews dumped the tanks and cut the switch. Now we'll see if we can find any part of that mail. I don't think you will, sir. Why? Why shouldn't we find it? Because Mr. Fitzgerald found the ship, sir, and reported it was completely burned to pieces. Mr. Fitzgerald. 